Well, people driving through downtown Carson City are accustomed to seeing people brandishing signs, protesting various issues. But they've never seen a huge crime scene tape deployed in front of the Attorney General's office. The banner and various other signs were the work of a group of people united by their collective belief that the Nevada justice system is corrupt. Their complaints range from alleged suppression of evidence by Washoe DA Dick Gamak to failure to support whistleblowers in state government. All of them pointed to a recent study that ranked Nevada 42nd among the states for risk of corruption due to lack of legal restraints and transparency. Comment on the protest? No comment about the corruption, Miss Pasto. He's not even releasing a plan to solve the state's budget woes. He ran on a platform that included what he called a secret plan. No, we're, we're still working. You're going to be reading a bit today about your secret plan. Some might call that irresponsible or arrogant. I have a secret plan. We're going to be coming out with a budget plan that's very good. Where in the world is Brian Sandoval?
We have the power to demonstrate to the people of Nevada that honest, civil, and responsive government is alive and well in Carson City. Finally, I will explore resources and services available through the Nevada Judicial College, the Attorney General's Office, and other state agencies to ensure that all agencies with rulemaking and regulatory authority take advantage of appropriate training. Through continued hard work, transparency, and clarity, each and every one of us in this chamber can take steps to send a clear message to our constituents. This is the people's government. We are but stewards. The Nevadans have every right to hold us to high standards of conduct and responsiveness. Dear Governor Sandoval, you are not morally qualified to preside over the lives of 2.7 million fellow human beings or any number. A decent person holding the office of Governor of Nevada would do a number of things that you would never give any serious thought to doing. Context. Nevada recently received a D-minus report card grade following an in-depth study by Public Radio International the Center for Public Integrity and Global Integrity. The D-minus focuses on Nevada government having no integrity. Nevada government is corrupt, Brian, extremely corrupt. Whose desk does that D-minus land on, Brian? In case you want to plead stupidity, that D-minus has been excreted on your desk. If you cared one iota about this, you would go on national television and apologize with tears in your eyes for not moving one inch in the direction of making changes. This writer can hear you laughing, Brian. Again, in case you want to pretend stupidity, you can't. You cannot say with any credibility that you inherited serious problems from Gwen and Gibbons and you haven't had enough time in office to deal with them. Before moving to the governor's mansion, you insulted the Office of Attorney General for a number of years. As AG, you could not have helped learning how dirty our state's inner workings are. To be realistic, the state's controlling criminal elite would not have put you in the AG's office in the first place if you were not friendly to them, if you were not their kind of people. Did you attempt any improvements within our dirty state government while AG, Brian? The answer is no. You were content with corrupt judges and Supreme Court justices, violations of the Constitution, violations of due process, violations of judicial canons, and gross insults against truth and justice. More context. A fairly recent study by the American Civil Liberties Union of Nevada determined that our state prisons are unfit for human habitation. Quote, unfit for human habitation, end quote. Dr. William Noel, who was a member of the ACLU study team, here are some of his words, quote, it is my opinion that the medical care provided at Ely State Prison amounts to the grossest possible medical malpractice and most shocking and callous disregard for human life and human suffering that I have ever encountered in my 35 years of practice." End quote. Thoughtful persons agree that the way a society treats its prison inmates is a measure of that society's character. Brian, here are some of the actions you would take post-haste 
if you were a decent human being. First of all, you would immediately do whatever is required to provide first-rate medical care to all inmates in all of our state's jails and prisons, allowing fellow human beings to die, albeit slowly, from lack of proper medical care for serious health issues is nothing less than murder. Murder. On the state's organizational chart, you are above the Board of Prison Commissioners and the Nevada Department of Corrections. No person in Nevada bears more heinous guilt than you, Brian, for allowing fellow human beings to die unnecessarily in our penal facilities. Tied to this, you would stop crapping around with the matter of Mr. Nolan Klein, who died in prison in 2009 after spending more than 20 years locked up for crimes he did not commit. Any decent human being in your position, Brian, would admit that Nolan was victimized by a drunken judge, Charles McGee, an incompetent and lazy attorney, Shelley O'Neill, and corrupt prosecutors, including Washoe District Attorney Dick Gamick. Action 2. You should fire every member of the Nevada Highway Patrol from Chris Perry on down. Persons paid to enforce the law should not themselves be among the worst criminals in the state. They should not fill the Gestapo role as political police, and they should not be thugs. When NHP troopers feel free to pull and point their handguns at citizens who have done nothing wrong, heads should roll. When NHP troopers feel free to tamper with evidence, such as videos taken by cameras on board their cars, heads should roll. When NHP troopers feel free to lie in court under oath, heads should roll. When NHP troopers feel free to falsely accuse innocent persons of crimes they clearly did not commit, heads should roll. Token, cosmetic, changes in the makeup of the NHP will not suffice for firing every last employee. Leaving one rotten apple in the barrel will contaminate all apples. Regarding Perry, he cannot help but know how corrupt our government is in Nevada, and he has not spoken out. I encourage persons watching this video who have been victimized by highway patrol thugs to send me email before some lowlife gets me in his crosshairs. Please send email to my associate, Russ Cool at russcool at gmail.com. R-U-S-S-K-U-L-E at gmail.com. Should I leave the scene for any reason, Russ and his associates will carry on. Russ is a charter member of the Merry Men of Langley. Note that any future event suggesting this writer took his own life will be fraudulent. Brian, a third action you should take immediately is to retain a PI company known for competence and integrity to interview all top officers of all mining companies in Nevada. Such interviews intended to obtain proof that mining companies have been permitted to pay handsome fees to government insiders to avoid real thing tax audits. This over a period of many years. As you no doubt know, Brian, Nevada's Treasury has been shortchanged in the millions of dollars going back at least to Gwynne's time as governor and Gibbons' time as governor. When bribery realities are confirmed, all mining companies that benefited from bribing government officials would have their total assets confiscated at zero cents on the dollar. Involved mines would then be operated for the benefit of the people of Nevada, enabling legislation assumed as required. This writer has talked with persons, plural case, who formally conducted audits of mining companies in our state.
the Nevada Department of Taxation has been understaffed with qualified mining auditors for years with no good reason. Where proper and aggressive audits of all mining companies would have bolstered Nevada's treasury, doing so was avoided in that bribes kept most companies from being audited. Real thing mining auditors can find far more taxes due the state than their own salaries and benefits cost the state. Something like five to ten times more. When adequate staffing permits only three correction, when inadequate staffing permits only three percent or fewer companies to be properly audited in a given year, the great majority of mining companies have no reason to not run amok in their fraudulent tax reporting and related tax payments. Obviously, the government insiders who have permitted and benefited from the bribery scenario must be identified, tried by a jury, and imprisoned if not executed. It's impossible to imagine such a bribery scheme having life without each Nevada governor in his turn being fully aware of this scam. Tied to the bribery scheme that has stolen millions of dollars from Nevada's financial health, we have the issue of protecting whistleblowers. As it is now in Nevada, whistleblowers are fired when they expose any sign of corruption. This is standard practice in the Silver State and has been for a long time. Whistleblowers are fired rather than given the laurels they deserve. Whistleblowers are a first defense against government insiders who abuse their public positions to attack the best interests of their employers, we the people. Insiders who fire whistleblowers expose themselves as defenders and practitioners of corruption. Public officials who fire or otherwise harm whistleblowers should be tried by jury and imprisoned for many years when found guilty of covering up crimes against the people of Nevada. We the people need whistleblowers to monitor what's going on in our government so that crooks can be weeded out and properly punished. The need for whistleblowers obviously does not just pertain to the Nevada Department of Taxation. Brian, you're one of the government officials who sees whistleblowers as a problem, aren't you? Brian, a fourth action you would take if you were actually committed to delivering decent American government to the people of Nevada would be calling for the resignations of each and every elected official in Nevada for jurisdictions. Nevada government's culture of corruption could not exist if any elected official at any time called for investigations into the realities that produce the D minus in public radio study of corruption in our state, as well as in all other states. Those officials who might otherwise be considered decent and honest are not decent and honest in that they ignore crimes and stupidities perpetuate, perpetrated by their cronies who lie, cheat, steal, and ignore checks and balances intended to ensure the delivery of government under law. On its surface, calling for the resignations of all elected officials in Nevada does seem like an insane idea. Unfortunately, letting business as usual continue in Nevada is even more insane. I'm going to repeat that. On its surface, calling for the resignations of all elected officials in Nevada does seem like an insane idea. Unfortunately, letting business as usual continue in Nevada is even more insane. Nevada's problem with corruption is not going to go away unless harsh measures are taken. Token cosmetic changes will not do what must be done. To offer any possibility of cleaning up Nevada government, no official
official now in office must be permitted to remain in government where he or she could infect, contaminate, and pollute replacement officials. Brian, will you do this? Call for the resignations of all persons now holding any public office in Nevada? Of course not. And therein lies the future of the state of Nevada. Our state will continue to be a cesspool of rotten government. Our state will continue to rate low grades on report cards. Tying to the above, our electronic voting machines must be recognized as the enemies of democracy that they are. They cannot be trusted to report honest numbers. They are not open and transparent. As stated by one world-class computer security expert, quote, these machines must have been designed for the purpose of throwing elections, end quote. No voting system has yet been devised which beats old-fashioned paper ballots that are hand-marked and eyeball-counted at precinct level before they're transported anywhere for any reason. Transporting permits actual ballots to be replaced with uh, counterfeit ballots that have been pre-marked by traitors insiders with intent to elect candidates chosen by any local power elite. Brian, if you had the right stuff to deliver decent, honest American government, you would call for legislation to make it an act of treason for any persons to do anything to throw any election having to do with persons or issues. A few books on the problem with electronic voting machines are listed on my website at www.booksampler.net www.booksampler.net Final action item for this letter, Governor, has to do with restoring a real thing grand jury process in Nevada. When criminals inside of government can prevent the honest enforcement of due process once a crook is indicted or prevent the impaneling of an ordered grand jury, the sovereignty of we the people has been usurped. This is nothing less than treason, a capital crime. Governor, you are aware that Brian Krolicki was properly indicted by the Clark County Grand Jury and that cronies of yours have been permitted to emasculate said indictment. Trial by jury would, without question, find Krolicki guilty of serious crimes and he would be locked up for a number of years in one of Nevada's hell hole prisons. What have you done to correct this travesty? Nothing. By itself, this exposes you as the scum that you are. Two days of hearings in late 2009 justified the ordering of a grand jury investigation into multi-million dollar racketeering at the University of Nevada, Reno. Cronies of yours, Brian, including A.G. Masto, have prevented this G.J. investigation from going forward. You have done nothing to defend the principle of government under law. By itself, this exposes you as the scum that you are. Brian, you are an enemy of our country's noble vision and our country's noble ideals. You are a demonstrated enemy of just government under just laws justly administered by just public officials. Brian, you will not serve a second term as governor of Nevada. Brian, you will not serve a second term as governor of Nevada. Way out in the land of the setting sun, where the wind blows wild and free, there's a lovely spot, just the only one, that means home, sweet home to me. If you follow the old Kit Carson trail till the day
desert meets the hills. Oh, you certainly will agree with me. It's a place of a thousand thrills. Home means Nevada. Home means the hills. Home means the sage and the pine. Out by the Truckee silvery rills. Out where the sun always shines. There is the land that I love the best. Fairer than all I can see. Right in the heart of the golden west. Home means Nevada to me. Yes, home means Nevada to me. Happy birthday, Nevada! Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Dino BCN. I'm the executive director for the Department of Taxation. There's a couple of things I want to clear up about a misconception about the state of Nevada. Yes, we're hosting this in a casino, but I am really tired of hearing about we're all just a bunch of gangsters. <laughs> we believe in fairness and equity, and I'll be honest with you, we do a hell of a job collecting taxes. <laughs> We have a very low rate of non-payment. And there's a ring. He's standing next to me. <laughs> this is Bear. And it's my understanding that some of you have not paid your dues. And I'm going to give this to Bear because he's going to come around and make absolutely sure that you pay up. OK? You're the man. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, everyone. Appreciate the letter.